Hey guys, this is Christine. I'm with Dogs for Life Training and Wellness. And um, I want to talk a little bit about um, dogs and dog personalities and um, how do you know what the right food is based on your dog's personality. And so uh, I wanted to kind of just spend some time going over, um, you know, how you might uh, select this and um, figure out what's the best food for your dog. Because that is a question that I often get from people like, you know, what's the best food for my dog? And, you know, every dog is a little bit different. But what I wanted to do is uh, just kind of give you an example based on how I would analyze, for example, one of my own personal dogs. And so um, I have a dog, her name is Penny. And uh, Penny, I adopted when she was about uh, two years old uh, and I've had her for a couple of years now. And so, you know, at first you're not really like thinking about things, you know, you're going through transitions and stuff like that, but it's been a couple of years and I, I'm starting to notice that there are some things about Penny um, that I feel I could do better in and uh, I can help her. Uh, and some of her personality traits are uh, something that needs to be uh, in, in uh, you know, kind of corrected, I guess, is where I'm going. And so uh, what I've done is I first kind of went and listed my dog's personality. Um, so uh, one of the things is uh, for her, she's super friendly. She's almost overly friendly. She's she, you know, she kind of wants to be uh, with you. She's always given kisses. She wants to, you know, when she meets strangers, she's very happy. She wags her tail. She's not overly, uh, overly like jumping on them and stuff like that. Uh, but, but she is present and she kind of really wants to be there. And so I just find that, you know, that that's a beautiful part for her because she does uh, like to be with people. Um, but then there's these pieces that like when, when she's in the house, um, she's pretty high strung. She's a high strung dog. Um, she's unable to settle down. She's always pacing back and forth. Uh, she always wants to go outside. Um, let's see, uh, you know, some of those things is she has high prey drive. Uh, she is a sight hound, so that's not uncommon. They have a lot of hunt to them. Um, but uh, there seems to be this tremendous amount of nervousness around her. Because in one sense, although she's friendly, she's kind of got this like nervous, fearful, like, you know, when 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 I walk in the room, she leaves. Um, and, uh, you know, if uh, but on the other hand, she's a cuddler, she she wants to come and sit by you. Uh, she wants to be cuddled. She likes the, the contact. Um, but there are just certain times of the day where she just feels like, you know, I'm noticing this nervousness about her. And uh, she eats like a horse. She woofs out her food as fast as she could eat it. Uh, when she's outside, you know, got to make sure, pick up all the dog shit because she's just constantly like looking for food to eat, uh, just looking anything, eating grass, eating whatever. She catches the animals outside. She just scarfs them down. She's just always this, this incredible hunger. But on the, on the flip side, she's extremely thin. Her ribs show. It doesn't matter how much I feed her or how much she eats. She really never gains weight. Um, she can be a little pesty because she just doesn't know what to do with that energy uh, that she she has. Um, and so, you know, she doesn't have a lot of fear issues, but I do know that, she, you know, she's a little nervous, like thunderstorms and, and things of that nature. But um, walking her on leash, she kind of like, you know, she runs to the end of leash and then she stops. She never really pulls. She just kind of does this like grow and then she stops and she waits and then she goes and then she stops and she waits and she goes and she stops and wait, which is really 
annoying <laughs> to me. Um, I mean, again, she's not pulling or anything like that, but it's just that, just that everything with her is just this, you know, constant movement and this kind of chaos. And, and so, yeah, it's just something that I feel that I need to start addressing at this point in time. So, um, one, being that I have the experience of working with dogs from a training aspect and from a health aspect and, you know, putting proper diets together intuitively, I think about, you know, her, her, uh, her, her wanting to eat uh, everything is that she needs to have food that is kind of more filling and sustainable. Um, and so I feel like, you know, fiber and grains are going to be really important in her diet to help her feel full. Um, so although my dogs get a fresh food diet, um, I know that, you know, uh, for her, I just feel like, you know, she needs the sensation of feeling full when she eats. Um, the other thing I kind of have a feeling is that she's going to need some stabilizing herbs, herbs that help her to deal with her day um, from an aspect of this, just this nervous and this high energy and the drive and, and the stress that that causes her. Um, and so stabilizing herbs with uh, adaptogens such as ashwagandha, uh, got, uh, you know, passion flowers, astrugulus, uh, so maybe, you know, there are different things. Some people might use CBD oil, um, you know, but just something to help stabilization for her. Um, then another thing that I decided was, uh, I am going to, uh, find some slow feeders. And so I had looked at a couple on, um, on Amazon. Let me just show you, uh, these that I kind of found here. So this was one that I really, um, liked, uh, it, you put the food in it and then it, kind of spins around. So, you know, you could put different, uh, you know, whether you're a kibble feeder or a fresh food feeder, but it appears like you could slow, you know, slow it down. They do have different um, inserts that you could be using, um, but I'm just going to go with this one here um, uh, that has the little bone in the middle that spins around and just keeps her from eating. So that's one that I really liked. Um, at this point I haven't tried them and I'm not endorsing anything. I'm just kind of telling you like my thought process as to, you know, trying to find the right food, um, for a dog of her personality trait. The other one that I found was this uh, this dog food uh, this dog food bowl here that kind of spins from the top. It's got multiple layers. Uh, you can kind of see, uh, you know, she's got to spin it to get from layer to layer to get to the food. So these are a couple of um, a couple that I think that uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and utilize for her. And so the other thing is because, uh, you know, she has been tested for parasites, uh, which sometimes creates behaviors that I've been describing where they're just always hungry. They're always eating everything. The fact that she's eating other dog shit uh, could be a, you know, uh, eating whatever she's finding in the grass, which could be coccidia, it could create coccidia or gerardia. Uh, which are parasites that are commonly found. Uh, so she has been tested and she's not showing uh, parasites. So, you know, you kind of want to eliminate any potential medical issues. Um, and so uh, in addition to trying to find uh, and creating a diet for her that uh, uh, is higher in fiber and kind of helps to fill her tummy up, uh, to add the stabilizing herbs. Uh, there are uh, different manufacturers that are out there. Um, we have a particular one on our website that uh, we offer, which is the, 
let's see here, is uh, the OM, uh, which has some of the uh, products that I talked about. It helps to alleviate stress, reduce anxiety, helps to promote calmness and enhances. So you could go to the Dogs for Life website. Um, you know, if that's something that you have uh, interest or you uh, want to uh, try for your dog that is also struggling with uh, anxiety or stress or nervousness. Um, and then the other thing is uh, I am going to do a detoxification uh, diet with her for about 10 days. And so in order to detox, certainly there are supplements that you could do. Um, uh, you know, can kind of Google it, look it up uh, again on the website. Uh, we do have a uh, cleanse that you can just add to their food. And so in doing a detox, what we're doing is we're removing the toxins, uh, removing the buildup, helping to clear the organ system so that they could be functioning properly, such as the kidney, the liver, you know, making sure that the organ system and the um, heavy metals and the toxins within the body can be shedded so that we can start clearing um, her system a bit. Um, and then the next piece that uh, we're going to kind of add in here is starting to select the proper food. And so when somebody says, you know, what is the best food for my dog? You know, there are a lot of things that you want to, uh, you know, assess. And again, personality is is one of them. And you know, what is your dog's like? What you know, what is their behaviors? Uh, and how how you can begin to uh, kind of help them uh, by creating this strategy. And so, in addition, here um, we have. Uh, let's see here. Uh, off of the Dogs for Life website. A you can go to a blog, which is called the Yin Yang Dog Diet for Personalities. And so here um, it kind of talks about yin and yang. If you're not real familiar with uh, traditional Chinese medicine, basically yin and yang is a way um, to assess uh, an overall internal external about how your dog is doing, how personality, how's your dog's uh, you know, organ function. Uh, and how to assess them based on uh, uh, basically what they call the elements. And so as you scroll down here, you can begin to see the yin-yang dog personalities. You got a fire personality, you have earth personality, you have a metal personality, you have water personality, and you have a wood personality. And so supplements, to help, um, obviously, with a dog of this nature, calming, uh, you know, doing that detox, joint support, because they're always moving. Uh, you want to make sure that their joints and their muscles are going to be healthy. And so right here on the bottom begins to give us kind of an indicator as to what diet and what foods do we start feeding this dog. Um, and so when we talk about different foods, what we're looking at is the energetic of foods in how it creates either, um, you know, rising and or a lowering of energy. Does it create the energy to raise or does it create energy in this calming uh, moment? And so to put it from a, a human content form, um, think of it like, for example, if you eat on a hot summer day, like, you know, some watermelon and watermelon is very hydrating. It's very cooling. It helps to bring the temperature down internally. And so when we think about internal, we're not talking about the temperature of the food. We're talking about the energetics of the food and what that creates within the body. And so, you know, things like I mentioned, watermelon maybe cucumber, um, you know, duck, those are very cooling and sedative foods, which would probably be very good for Penny. Um, on the flip side, again, from a human aspect, if you think about, you know, uh, something of uh, like ginger root, 
um, or jalapeno peppers, you know, you eat either of those, those are energy. You feel the heat and the warmth in the body. It creates the heat. It's kind of an expansion of energy. And so this is what we talk about when we're looking at food energetics. And so to kind of get a little bit deeper on this is once you figure out your dog's personality, and again, we offer this off of the website where you can read a little bit more, you can then go under the learning tab here. We've got this food therapy and behavior modification. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper, um, you can kind of look here uh, as you scroll down here. And again, you can learn a little bit more about like the imbalances uh, uh, of the page. I'll let you, you know, read that if you decide that you want to visit. This is probably something that you're going to have to uh, go into uh, and just, you know, kind of spend some time there and kind of do a little research. And so anyways, um, after you make an assessment to your dog, and in this case, again, we're looking at for Penny. So anyways, again, trying to match your food with your dog's personality and who your dog is and how to maybe balance out some uh, behavioral um, uh, aspects of your dog um, through a uh, food diet. Um, requires you to first kind of, you know, make a list and make an assessment of your dog and who is your dog and what are some of your dog's personality traits and so forth. Once you figure out your dog's personality traits, you want to kind of categorize them in the traditional Chinese medicine. Again, what element do they fall under? And under that particular element, what are the foods that you would feed to help with that balancing? Uh, the other thing is you're always going to want to look at, you know, maybe what supplements are going to help you uh, through your uh, dog's process. So for Penny, again, I feel like, you know, doing the detox, getting her organs, clearing out the liver and so forth are going to be beneficial for her. Um, and then, uh, you know, creating a diet that's more specific based on uh, some of the uh, aspects that I've already kind of mentioned about her personality, uh, getting a slow feeder to help slow that process down, put her on some stabilizing herbs to help that. And so this is kind of where you would begin with making sure that you're feeding your dog um, the best food quality, um, creating a diet. And if you are interested in uh, home preparation. If you're worried about that and you're not really sure, we do do custom meal plans. Um, and so if you are interested in doing a custom meal plan, uh, when you purchase the meal plan, you will be sent out a uh, like a, a dog profile where we ask more in depth about your dog's personality. Um, we can also incorporate uh, not only in the personality, but, you know, also identifying that sometimes uh, dog behavior, um, you know, dog behavior is also can be uh, a symptom of dogs that have food sensitivities. And so, you know, having your dog tested for food sensitivities um, would probably be very beneficial while you're doing this analysis and creating this diet that is more in conjunction with, you know, who your dog is and, um, then whatnot. So again, you know, these are things that I've been working with, with my, uh, clientele for quite some time, which is, uh, why you'll find on, uh, the website, uh, all of these pieces, because I do feel in order to create a well-balanced dog is that you've got to have the tools in order to analyze who your dog is so that you can create the best diet for your dog's personality, behavior, health, and so forth. Uh, you can kind of be more aware, but here we've got the food and environment sensitivity tests. It tests over 350 uh, elements. And so it talks about different additives, preservatives, often that's kind of the problem. 
with a lot of dogs that show symptoms, behavior issues, hyperactivity, uh, difficulty in learning, they can't concentrate. And so, you know, food sensitivities have a host of uh, of uh, issues that are connected to dogs that we don't even put together. We don't even think twice that this behavior is associated, you know, to my dog having a food sensitivity, but it's relatively inexpensive. So for $89, you get those 350 different elements that are tested. Uh, you get your results within about 10 days. Um, and then from there, you can decide on how to create and start even customizing your dog's diet even more. So not only can you then go through your yin-yang um, diets here, um, and then you would match that up to, you know, is my dog experiencing food sensitivities? Uh, so that gives you a tremendous amount of tools to be able to begin to identify who is your dog? What is their personality? Um, is the, you know, what is the best diet for them? And how can you help them best? And so that's uh, the best way that I could explain, again, based on uh, giving you an analysis uh, for my girl, Penny. Anyways, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to uh, check us out over here at dogsforlife.com. Uh, and we'll uh, be talking to you. You can always schedule a consultation if you have some interest or further questions. Again, please visit the website. And uh, I hope that gives you a sense of uh, maybe some way to uh, help, help your dog overall and their diet. And uh, have a beautiful day, guys. Thank you again for sitting here with me. I hope I gave you some valuable information. Bye now.